Out of the cradle of Egyptian civilization came men and women whom thousands worshipped as gods on earth. They led their people through an era that brought human creativity, mysticism, and intellect together to form one of the greatest cultures the world has ever seen. And the New Kingdom era was a period when the most powerful and famous pharaohs reigned. However, out of all the pharaohs during this time, there was one who spearheaded a cultural, religious, and artistic revolution that rattled the country, throwing thousands of years of tradition out the window and imposing a new world order. Was his revolution driven by necessity, greed, or divine inspiration? Today on Crunch, we will see who was the pharaoh whose reign created a significant time frame in Egyptian history and has received so much attention from scholars and the modern public. Egyptian civilization is considered one of the oldest civilizations in the world. From the time it flourished, it lasted for more than 3,000 years and by the year 1353 BCE, this civilization was more than 2,000 years old and had been ruled by around 87 pharaohs. It was during this time that Akhenaten came to power as the pharaoh of Egypt. By the time Akhenaten took the throne, his family had been ruling Egypt for nearly 200 years and had established a huge empire dominating Palestine, Peninsula, and Nubia. It gave Egypt a high degree of wealth and security he succeeded his father, Amenhotep III. He was hidden from public scrutiny for a good part of his father's 40-year reign, although when his older brother died, Akhenaten became the crown prince of Egypt, ultimately becoming pharaoh on his father's death. But after his death, his name was omitted from the king's lists, and his images were desecrated and destroyed. But what led to so much hate he received? From the surviving fragments of evidence, Egyptologists pieced together the story of his life and reign known to history as the Amarna period, which introduced them to spiritual upheaval and experimentation unlike any other in Egyptian history. Akhenaten constructed on a stretch of virgin soil and about 6 kilometers by 4 kilometers in size was predominantly on the eastern Nile bank and gave the impression of a garden city with extensive palaces, temples for Aten, living quarters for the aristocracy, and ceremonial graves excavated into the cliffs to the east. All around the immense rocky circle that surrounds the location of the city, the king has engraved in the rock 14 stelae, on which he explains his reasons for the choice of the site. The king proclaimed that the Aten had manifested itself for the first time on the site and that the Aten had chosen this site for the king alone. In order to quickly construct the city, smaller building blocks called Talatat were introduced that were easier for unskilled labourers to manage. Most of the township and administration buildings were completed roughly three years later. The town served as home to the royal family and an estimated population of up to 50,000 people. It was, of course, still a busy construction site when the court moved in. Under the pharaoh's supervision, Egyptian art underwent a monumental transformation, with centuries of rigid convention abandoned in favor of a new, highly stylized artistic approach imbued with divine meaning. Several temples, exclusively dedicated to the Aten, were built, among them the main one, Gempaten, which meant find or meet the Aten. It is very different from temples dedicated to other deities of ancient Egypt, Instead of being composed of private closed-in sanctuaries, the open-air courtyards at Gempaten allowed Aten's sunlight to flow directly into the complex. But it is not an entirely new style, as it is quite similar to the solar temples of the 5th dynasty, some nine centuries earlier. Following in the footsteps of Gempaten, the great Aten Temple of Amarna was another prime example of an open-air temple. Surrounded by a large enclosure wall, the temple complex consisted of two primary structures, the sanctuary, located in the eastern section of the complex, and the long temple, located in the western section. The fact that this temple was arranged on the east-west axis was itself a nod to the path that Aten took across the sky each day. Although as the son of the god himself, he seemed to have felt that the affairs of the state were below him and stopped concentrating on his responsibilities. Some letters to the king that were discovered in the ruins of El Amarna show the discontent of the army commanders and high commissioners in Palestine and Syria. 
Akhenaten's leadership was significant, but in his attempts to change the religion, he became consumed by his own beliefs and not the well-being of the country. Akhenaten, together with his wife Nefertiti, did what he had to do. However, it led to a campaign of damnatio memori against him. Damnatio memori is basically a modern Latin phrase meaning condemnation of memory. Worship of the Aten did not long survive his death. Akhenaten's whimsical religious and architectural ideas surely made him enemies. No sooner had he died than the clergy of other religions, notably those of Amun, who were very powerful, systematically erased all traces of his reign. It was his son, Tutankhaten, having changed his name to Tutankhamun, the famous boy pharaoh, dropping the Aten and embracing Amun, who restored the god Amun to supremacy within the Egyptian pantheon. After three years, Akhenaten was deserted and wiped off the map so that Thebes once again became the seat of government. In the beginning, the young pharaoh worshipped the old gods, especially Amun of Thebes and the sun god Re Harakte. While he ascended the throne under his birth name, Amenhotep IV, which meant Amun is satisfied. However, around the fifth year of his reign as pharaoh, he changed his name to Akhenaten. This new name represented his belief in a new religion that worshipped the sun god Aten. Akhenaten meant living spirit of Aten. What was this new religion that motivated Akhenaten to upend so many elements of Egyptian society? The answers are rooted in uncertainties, leading Egyptologists to long debate the nature of Akhenaten's transformation. Scholars have argued in favor of monotheism, henotheism, agnosticism, and almost everything in between. What is certain, though, is that the new religion elevated the Aten to the position of state deity and centered largely on its worship. The Aten was never shown in human or animal form, but was represented as the sun disk with extended rays ending in hands. In these reliefs, we can see the rays of Aten shining on the pharaoh and the royal family. Aten was the life-giving and life-sustaining power of the sun. Unlike the old gods, he had no carved image hidden in a dark room deep within a temple, but was worshipped out in the light of day. Akhenaten began his movement towards the institution of a monotheistic religion centered on Aten, the sun god, by building a temple outside the Amun temple complex of Karnak at Thebes. The sun god already formed an important component of the Amun godhead complex as Aman Ri, or Ri Hanakte. It was soon clear that the two cults could not survive together. Sometime around his fourth regnal year, Akhenaten even dispatched agents to erase the names and images of certain gods from existing texts and monuments. Akhenaten further reshaped Egypt's religious sphere through the persecution of some traditional gods, most notably Amun and the closing of his temples. He proceeded to move his capital from Thebes halfway down the Nile, which he called Akhenaten. That breaks down to Akit Aten, the horizon of Aten. It is today called El Amarna. Akhenaten's reign is believed to be one of the great crisis points in Egyptian history. Later, Egyptian historians would refer to him only as the heretic king. We know both little and much about Akhenaten, that is to say, we know enough to wish we knew much more. What are your thoughts on this? Leave us a comment below. Also, if you liked the video, do not forget to give us a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching Crunch History. Subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we upload new amazing content.